Hey guys, it's Arvin. This is tutoring lesson number four. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what it takes to do extremely effective tutoring. And the key to all super effective tutoring is to come down to this. It's to figure out what the real problem is. Who's the real criminal here? So I've made this list and we'll discuss a few of these ideas. If you're working with a student in math, and by math I mean algebra, pre-calculus, and anything like that, it basic what you need to check, you need to check to see if any of the underlying common skills are missing. And for math, it's gonna be multiplication tables. If a student doesn't know them, and by the way, you'll be shocked at how many 15, 16, 17 year old students don't know their multiplication tables at all. Uh, adding fractions, which of course builds on that, uh, combining like terms and factoring. Those are the missing skills. Uh, those are the most common missing skills. It could be something else, but start with those. Check those, even, including multiplication tables. Just do a quick check. Ask, ask the student what 7 times 7 or something. If it takes more than one second, you know, that's probably going to be a big part of the problem. Uh, for reading, this is something that we're, we're seeing more in the SAT and stuff like that. Just extreme naivete, where the student's not seeing that reading is meant to be persuasive. Uh, that's for, for SAT reading, SSAT reading, uh, etc. Physics, the real issue is usually either adding vectors or not understanding what normal force is. A lot of students just believe the normal force is the up force. If they think that, they're gonna get just every, like a huge percentage of problems wrong. Chemistry, moles are huge. Electronegativity is huge. If a student simply doesn't know what a mole is, so what do we do here with this information? We're looking for basically what we call reverse Turing questions. Uh, kind of like the opposite of a Turing test to see if the human is actually not thinking at all. We're trying, it's a test for real thought and, and we're seeing if it's there. So the, some of the questions that I'll use in chemistry for moles, I'll just ask the student a question like how much does a mole of protons weigh? Most students will say it weighs 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams or kilograms. So, you know, the size of a planet uh, rather than one gram, the size of a pencil eraser. Um, I might ask a student what has a stronger desire. I, and I try to keep these things very simple, right? Because I start doing, we're using words like electronegativity and whatnot. Students will just jump on Google and start searching and give, give all kinds of nonsense. So I'll ask a question like, what wants electrons more, sodium or fluorine? And if they just don't know what I'm talking about, well, now I know the issue is something in, in, that, in that type of area. Uh, there's a bunch of these questions which are basically reverse Turing questions, which are there to, to, to see what underlying basic skill there is. Now, biology is a tricky one because you know, sometimes people say, well, what in the world do you do in biology tutoring? Would you just say the stuff in the book slower? Well, no, not exactly. In biology tutoring, you're primarily going to be working on more learning techniques. I mean, biology is just information, right? But you're going to be working primarily on learning techniques. Uh, generally what happens is sometimes the pe people are just like not imagining any of it. There's no visualization happening or they're just getting lost in all the details. How can you tell which one? Just ask how long their homework is taking. If somebody's biology take homework is taking seven and a half hours, it means they're getting lost in the details. So here's what I recommend in those circumstances, generally speaking, as a, as a starting point. Of course, you keep on figuring stuff out, diagnosing, whatever. If the issue is lack of visualization, like they're not imagining it, they're spending two and a half minutes in their biology homework and getting nowhere, then what I'll have students do is start to connect some of these ideas to their physical body. So suppose I'm talking about red blood cells. Red blood cells don't have a nucleus, so they can cram an extra hemoglobin, right? So what am I going to say? I'm going to say, all right, now just imagine your own blood. I want to just like let the student actually feel their pulse, their heartbeat. Think about the blood inside of your body. I'll say, what color is it? They, of course, they know it's red. I said, you know there's cells in there, and those cells don't have a nucleus. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kind of personalizing the biology. Now, if some weird part of biology, you know, use your judgment there, obviously. But for most of biology, you can really find ways to connect that to a person. A mitochondria, you can imagine your cells. You can look at your skin cells. Imagine you're zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. That cell needs some energy. Where's it going to come from? If you make biology very close and personal, it'll usually overcome that avoidance of visualization. Uh, a lot of times I'll have to just use pictures and have people think about it, but that personalization I've, I've gotten pretty solid results from. Um, now, if it's the other thing where they're just trying to memorize every single word in the thing in some panicked, high anxiety way, I mean, you're going to be able to literally, once you get some practice doing biology tutoring, you're going to be able to look at somebody and immediately know which one, which, which of these directions it is. Or it could be neither. I mean, sometimes, just the, sometimes the class is just hard, right? But if it's not that, you'll be able to look at somebody immediately and know this, what, this is what they're doing. So if someone's doing this, 
we need to get them to start to prioritize. So there's a couple things that I do to help students prioritize important information over minor information. So instead of, th instead of thinking like, you know, what is step number 17 and a half in the electron transport chain? No, we don't need all that because it has nothing to do with anything. No one cares. So here's what I'll do. I'll have them do the uh, review questions if they're using a textbook, the review questions at the end of the textbook, at the end of the chapter, before they even read the chapter, right? The idea is to start to get them, give them a sense of what matters and what doesn't. If I see students doing things like taking book notes where they literally copy the entire chapter uh, onto a piece of paper, which takes 35 hours per chapter, I mean, we're going to talk about that pretty intensely that because that's an insanely terrible idea. I'll often recommend that students use the Barron's SAT subject test book. While you read that whole thing, it's, it talks about the highlights. It just gets you the main big points. And of course, if if appropriate, I'll have them use bi bi biology synapse on their own. To use biology synapse, by the way, just type biosynapse into any Slack channel. Calculus. Calculus is a, such a huge area for tutoring because people struggle with it. Here is what the biggest issues tend to be. It's usually two things. One, the chain rule. If they don't get the chain rule, they're not going to be able to do implicit differentiation or related rates or use substitution. Yeah, they can mem short term memorize some nonsense, but they're not going to be able to understand what they're doing, even at a formulaic level. That's the biggest thing. Second big, biggest issue, what a derivative tells you. A lot of students get in this process of just memorizing the steps of the derivative, but not having this idea that it tells you the slope of the tangent line or the instantane instantaneous rate of change or just anything. If you ask, what does the derivative tell you? They'll say, I don't know. If you say, if you then give them the hint, like, what tells you the slope of a tangent line? They'll be like, oh, I have no idea. I don't know what a tangent line is. So those are the types of things that, that you really need to make sure those things get addressed. Because if a student doesn't know what a derivative tells you, then the rest of the calculus is just not going to happen. If it's not one of those, it's generally that they just are forgetting to use the product rule all the time. So I'll give them a bunch of challenging problems that involve the product rule. I'll often work, find some way to work in some implicit differentiation so they really, so we can really see do they get the product rule. Anyway, that's the key of good tutoring. Find the underlying issue. Figure out where the real problem is addressed that the rest of it's going to go much more smoothly. A student needs to have a kernel of real solid understanding that they can add all the details onto, and that's what's going to get them amazing results on tests, quizzes, but most importantly, on their actual exams.